In the 1950s, the U.S. detonated more than a hundred nuclear devices at the Yucca Flats test site in Nevada, 65 miles northwest of Las Vegas. The tests resulted in dramatic increases in leukemia, lymphoma, thyroid cancer, breast cancer, melanoma, bone cancer, brain tumors, and gastrointestinal tract cancers. By the 1960s, there wasn't anywhere on Earth where the signature of nuclear bomb radiation wasn't present. According to the National Cancer Institute, nuclear tests in the 1950s and 1960s exposed 160 million Americans to iodine-131 fallout. A study by the Institute concluded 70% of thyroid cancers are attributed to the tests. According to a press release by the National Nuclear Safety Administration, earlier this month, two Air Force B-2 bombers dropped fake nukes in the Nevada desert. The bombs were dummy variants of the B-61, a nuclear bomb that's been in the U.S. arsenal since the 1960s. Brigadier General Michael Lutton said the B-61 is a critical element of the U.S. nuclear triad. The Sandia and Los Alamos National Laboratories worked together on the B-61 assemblies manufactured at the Kansas City National Security Campus and assembled at the Pantex plant in Amarillo, Texas. Russia voiced concerns about the nuke upgrade. The Russian Foreign Ministry believes the B-61 modifications make it more likely the U.S. will use nuclear weapons during a future conflict. In response to the provocative test, Russia announced a suspension of cooperation with the U.S. in the nuclear and energy sectors. Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister told RT Russia is planning to modernize its nuclear weapons stockpile. In response to the provocative test, Russia announced a suspension of cooperation with the U.S. in the nuclear and energy sectors. The Russian Deputy Foreign Minister told RT Russia is planning to modernize its nuclear weapons stockpile. On October 3rd, Russian President Vladimir Putin said his country has decided to withdraw from a landmark nuclear security agreement. Putin said the move was a response to the deterioration of relations between Moscow and Washington and what he called a radically changed environment. The U.S. has imposed sanctions on Russia, accusing it of interfering in Ukraine, most notably in Crimea. In March 2014, the people of Crimea voted to join the Russian Federation after a U.S. State Department-sponsored coup overthrew the government of Ukraine. The post-coup government is fiercely nationalistic and neo-fascist and continues to wage war against ethnic Russians in eastern Ukraine. Russia also opposes a U.S. and NATO missile defense system on its border with Poland. The United States insists the system is directed against Iran. Russia argues it's an attempt to destroy the strategic balance in Europe. In June, NATO launched its largest war game in Europe since the end of the Cold War. Russia responded with a large military exercise of its own in August and another in September on land and in the Black and Caspian Seas. NATO said during its Warsaw summit in July, it plans to deploy four multinational battalions along the eastern flank, one each in Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. The Pentagon says it'll spend $789 million in 2016 and $3.4 billion in 2017 to bolster NATO's eastern flank. The Nevada test adds a new and dangerous dimension to the growing hostilities between the United States and Russia. The exercise was conducted to send a message to the Russians that the U.S. is prepared to start a nuclear war in Europe. If this seems unimaginable, keep in mind the United States is the only country in the world to have ever used nuclear weapons. The atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 killed more than 250,000 civilians. Historians claim the attacks forced the Japanese to surrender and subsequently saved the lives of a million American soldiers prepared to invade the Japanese mainland. In fact, the Japanese were negotiating surrender when the bombs were dropped. The attack had little to do with ending the war. 
Many historians now agree the real reason for the attack was to demonstrate a new weapon of mass destruction to the Soviet Union and kickstart the Cold War. The United States is attempting to launch a new Cold War and a renewed round of obscene military spending that will rake in trillions of dollars for the military-industrial complex and the financial elite. Instead of profit, the result very well may be the end of life on planet Earth.